Good day, this is Jim Pytel from Columbia Gorge Community College Renewable Energy Technology Program. This is ET 122 Digital 2. Today we're going to have a discussion about gated latches. And let's start this off with a discussion about coon hunting. How good is a gun that every fourth time you shoot it, you don't shoot a coon, but your favorite coon hound? So, not too good, huh? Well, that's exactly what happens with an SR latch, uh, a basic SR latch. Remember, if we're given inputs on s and r of one and one it's stable it's going to stay set or reset and now for here's s and r and this is an active low um sr latch by the way and now for given a one and a zero here whatever state it's in it's going to reset and if it's already reset it's just going to stay reset and if we're given a zero on the set and a one on the reset, it's going to set, i.e. Q is going to be one. Uh, and if it's already set, it's just going to stay set. But what happens here? Zero, zero. You're simultaneously trying to set and reset it. Who knows? And that's exactly what's happening here. Who knows what you're going to hit? You might hit your coon hound, and you love that dog. So by adding an enable, to an SR latch, it does not the it does not eliminate the possibility of screwing this up, but kind of minimizes the chances. Okay, so that's exactly what a gated SR latch is. It's adding an enable along with your S and R. So let's put a uh, an active low SR latch or traditional basic SR latch, and there it is. That's our basic active low SR latch. And what we're going to do is we're going to add some steering gates uh, to the front of this along with an enable that's going to look like this. And that's all that looks like. What we have here is two NAND gates and one receives an S, an active high S, one receives an R, but they both receive this enable. So now let's think about what the truth table for a NAND gate is. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. The only time it's high when both inputs are simultaneously 1. And if you think about it, you want an active low on this side, the line, because this was our traditional um, active low basic SR gate. So what we want for this thing to set or reset is that zero condition there. So the only time you can get a zero coming into not S or not R is when this gate, let's say we're talking about this gate here, is receiving simultaneously a one and a one, i.e. when set is one and enable is one. What's going to happen is you're going to get a zero and whatever condition that latch was in, it's going to set. If it was already set, it's going to stay set. And now, let's say you want to reset the latch. It has to be enabled, and you're going to reset. And now this gate right here is actually going to get a zero coming out of it, according to this truth table. And the latch is going to reset in whatever condition it was. Previously, it may have already been in a reset where Q is equal to zero. It's going to stay zero. If Q was one, it's going to reset to zero. So yes, it does not eliminate the possibility of getting a triple one. Yes, you can still screw this thing up. But think about this right here, this enable signal as you know, let's go back to the gun example. You're not keeping your finger inside the trigger housing all the time. You know, this right here is the trigger. You know, if it's conditions of one and one, you're simultaneously setting and reset it. Don't enable it. You know, because think about this gate. From this perspective of this gate, one and zero, you're getting a one there. And then perspective of this gate, zero and one, and excuse me, zero and nanded with one, you're getting a one. It's in a stable condition according to that truth table for the basic SR gate. So now you wait for a time 
when reset is low and set is low. Now still nothing's happening. And now you do want to set it. You bring this high and everything's all correct and ready to go. You put your finger in the trigger housing and pull the trigger. The latch sets. Basically all it is, a little safety device, making a gated SR latch a little bit more trustworthy than a basic SR latch, okay? So given this timing diagram here of S, R, and an enable signal, and our output Q, how is Q, uh, Q going to look given this? Well, from the perspective of the S here, so check this out. You're starting here, and you're walking this way. Okay, at this time right here, it says set the latch, but enable, it's not enabled. So let's assume it was reset. So it's just going to hang out. Okay, now it's saying reset the latch. Well, it's already reset, but it's not enabled, so it's kind of ignoring that input. And now it says, didn't you hear me the first time? Set that latch. But now it's enabled, good to go. It's going to set that latch. OK, and now it's going to turn off the enable right here. And it's going to request for reset, but it's not enabled. So it's not going to reset. And it's just going to keep on going as if it was set until it gets to this point right here where it says reset the latch. And this time it is enabled. So it's going to reset the latch. OK, and just for the heck of it, let's see what goes on when it says set this latch, reset this latch. And it's not enabled. What's going to happen? It's going to ignore that, basically saving you all those tiers right there for where is it going to be, high or low. But now, Let's just say that we did have that enabled then. It was high right here. Yeah, we don't know what's going to happen at this point right here. It could go high. It could go low. You could shoot your coon hound. You could shoot a coon. OK, so let's talk about, well, now that we've discuss probably some of the more complicated latches. Let's talk about a very, very, very easy latch. And that one is the gated D latch. So gated D latch, like I said, super simple. There's two inputs, our D, which is our data input, and our enable. It's got one out. Well, technically, it's got two outs because they're not Qs right there. But you can kind of ignore that right there because not Q is just simply a reflection of Q. Um, but basically, all the gated D latch does, if uh, enables high, if it's high, and D is high, it sets. And if our enable is high, and our D is low, it resets. OK? And if our enable is low, it just stays in the last spot it was, you know, because if it was set, it's just going to stay set. If it was reset, it's just going to stay in that last state. An easier way to think about this uh, is basically um, Q is going to follow D when enable, excuse me, takes what D is currently. Okay, let's say just input D is just merrily pulsing along, and let's just say Q was originally reset, so it's in a zero state, and our enable is going to look like, uh, let's say it's initially not enabled, and it's just going to go along, and Q is just going to sit there um, at reset because the thing's not enabled. You know, it's not going to it's not going to do anything. So until an enable pulse comes along right here. Let's just say we get a big, long enable pulse right there. Q is suddenly going to start following 
D's input. So right here it says reset. Well, it's right here it's saying reset. It's already in a reset condition, so it's going to stay there. But now it says set that thing, and it's going to set. Now it says reset it. It's going to reset it. And now it's going to say set it again. And here we set it. But now check this out. The enable pulse goes off right in the middle of this set command. So it's going to stay set because it's been disabled. Okay? And it's going to go along and it's going to stay set until it gets another brief, um, let's say it's a brief enable pulse right there. But during that brief window, it's saying set. Well, it's already set. Okay, so D-latch, gated D-latch, substantially uh, simpler than our gated SR latches. Save the easy stuff for last. Okay, so that's gated latches, but now we're going to go on to flip-flops.